In the previous episodes, we proved our LoRa sensor design using an Arduino Uno. We then measured how much current it draws and then estimated a battery life, assuming we're using two AAA alkaline batteries. We need to continue our quest to get that current draw as low as possible if we have any hope of running off of those batteries for a whole year. One of the first things we need to do is find a way to remove the UNO from our design. If you take a look at the UNO schematic, you'll see that there are a bunch of parts on the board that don't have anything to do with running our code. There are a couple of op amps, two voltage regulators, we'll likely only need one of those, some voltage dividers, and a power LED that just constantly draw current, and the worst offender, an entirely separate microcontroller that's always running. This auxiliary microcontroller, an ATmega16U2, allows us to program our target controller, the ATmega328P, without any additional circuitry, and it's what gives us the ability to debug using serial.print statements in Arduino. It essentially acts as a USB to serial converter. While all these extra parts make for a better prototyping experience with the UNO, they are mostly useless for our end product as they just needlessly draw current. To fix this, we're going to build our own Arduino on a breadboard. The good news is that the hardware is relatively simple. All we need is an ATmega328P microcontroller and a few supporting components. First, we'll want a 10K pull-up resistor on the reset line. This prevents the 328P from resetting itself if the pin picks up random electrical noise. Second, we need the external crystal circuitry, which is a crystal and two capacitors. A decoupling capacitor for the power rails is usually a good idea, but we don't need to really worry about it until we create our own power supply in a later episode. Finally, we need a way to program our 328P. The good news is that we can do that by using our Arduino Uno as a separate programmer. We'll want to use the dual inline package, or DIP, version of the 328P, as that will allow us to put it in a breadboard. The thing to remember is that our 328P DIP part does not have nicely labeled pins like the Arduino Uno. We'll need to connect VCC and AVCC along with the two ground pins to a 5 volt power supply. We want to put the 10K pull-up on the reset pin. We'll connect our crystal and capacitors to the two XTAL pins. Finally, to test that everything is working, we'll want to put an LED and a current limiting resistor on PB0, which maps to Arduino pin 8. Here is a breadboard view of what I just talked about. Notice that our crystal is placed across pins 9 and 10. We add 22 picofarad capacitors from each pin to ground. Here is the completed circuit, a bare-bones ATmega328P on a breadboard that acts like an Arduino Uno. To get our code loaded onto our 328P microcontroller, we're going to turn our Arduino Uno into a programmer that takes our compiled program and sends it over to the 328P. From there, we can connect other hardware, like our BME280 and RFM95 to create our IoT project. To use the Uno as a programmer, we first need to upload a special program to it. Plug the Uno by itself into your computer. In the Arduino program, go to File Examples and open the Arduino ISP code. ISP stands for In-System Programming. Make sure that Arduino Uno is selected as the board and you've picked the right serial port. Upload this to your Uno. Now that we've prepared our programmer, we need to connect it to our target, the 328P. We'll use the spy lines, SCK, MISO, and MOSI, to send the program from the Uno to the 328P. Don't worry, the Arduino ISP program we uploaded will do this for us. The 328P needs to be held and reset in order to receive a new program. To accomplish that, we wire pin 10 on the UNO to the reset pin of the 328P. The Arduino ISP program will force this line low at the right moment before sending over a new program across the spy lines. For now, we'll use the 5 volt power supply on the UNO to power our breadboard project. Here is the implemented setup with the UNO as the programmer. Before we upload our first program to the 328P, we need to talk about fuses. We'll cover them in more detail later, but for now, know that we need to set a few in the bare 328P so that it will act like an Arduino UNO. The 328P contains three sections of memory for you to use. The first is the program memory. This is where it stores your compiled code. The second is the data memory, which is broken up into four sections. 
The first is the general purpose registers, which the processor uses for whatever math operations it needs to perform. The I.O. and extended I.O. registers are used to control various hardware functions, such as toggling pins and setting timers. The static random access memory, or SRAM, is used by our program to store variables and other data. The electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, or EEPROM, allows us to store information that persists between microcontroller resets or power cycles. There is, however, a fourth section that's not considered part of the microcontroller's memory. The 328P has four bytes of fuses and locks, which control important functions such as allowing us to program the microcontroller and setting a clock source. The lock bits can be set to prevent reading and writing certain parts of memory. This can be useful for keeping people from snooping or hacking your end product, but they can be dangerous if you accidentally set some lock bits while trying to prototype your device. Fuses, on the other hand, let us configure the microcontroller's operation. We need to tell the 328P that we want to use an external crystal and a bootloader. In order to set these fuses on a device, we need to use a programmer. We wouldn't say, for example, be able to set the fuses directly on the Arduino Uno, but because we're using the Uno as a programmer, we can tell it to set the fuses on the bare 328P. There are a few software tools, like AVRDude, that lets us set these fuses manually, but the Arduino program will let us do so automatically if we just tell it to burn the bootloader. I've drawn the memory sections so that the top is near the beginning of the memory, or address zero. A bootloader is some very small program that resides in the program memory, usually near the end. Normally after a reset, the microcontroller begins running whatever instruction it finds at address 0 in program memory, and then it continues sequentially down, jumping and looping when necessary. However, if we load a bootloader and set the right fuses, we can tell the microcontroller to run the small bootloader program first before doing anything else. The Arduino bootloader waits for communication over the serial port. If there is communication, it will assume you are trying to install a new program, and the bootloader will overwrite the rest of the program memory with whatever machine code it receives from the serial port. After updating the flash with a new program, the microcontroller likely resets again and runs the bootloader a second time. This time, there is no serial communication, so the bootloader times out and the microcontroller returns to the newly uploaded program to begin executing the instructions found there. The bootloader file is a small, pre-compiled program hidden in the Arduino installation in your computer, so it does not matter which sketch we have open. I'll open a new sketch here to show that it won't make a difference. What does matter, however, is that we correctly pick the board for which bootloader and fuse settings we want to use. We want our 328P to act like an UNO, so make sure you have your board set to Arduino Uno. Then, make sure you have the serial port of the programmer selected, which is the real Uno in this case. Finally, since we are using the Arduino Uno as an in-system programmer, go to Tools, Programmer, and select Arduino as ISP. Click Tools, Burn Bootloader to upload the bootloader program to the 328P and update the necessary fuses. You should see Done Burning Bootloader when it's finished. Let's write some test code. Remember that we connected the LED to Arduino pin 8, so I'll just flash that over and over again. Good old Blinky. This is super important. Do not click the Upload button. If you do, Blinky will be sent to the Uno, which will overwrite our ISP code running on it. We want to use the Uno as a programmer to upload Blinky to the Bayer 328P, so click Sketch, Upload Using Programmer. Don't worry about saving Blinky, it's easy enough to rewrite if you need to. With that, the LED on your breadboard should begin blinking on and off. Note that when we upload a sketch like this using a programmer, we wipe out the bootloader in the 328P, but we still keep the fuses, which is why we had to upload the bootloader in the first place so we could get those fuses set. When it comes to programming the Bayer 328P, you have two options, with or without a bootloader. If you go without a bootloader, you can save a little bit of program memory space, but it requires a few more steps to upload new firmware. This might be a good thing if you don't want your end users to change your program very easily. You'll also need a dedicated programmer. We can use another Arduino board as our programmer, but it often lacks some features that might make deep debugging easier. 
Some debuggers, like the Atmel Ice, cost more money than in Uno, but let you do things like step through your program line by line or peek at register values. Alternatively, you can keep the Arduino bootloader in your 328P. It uses some program memory space, but not much, only about 512 bytes for the Arduino bootloader. You can also upload new programs more easily with just about any USB to serial adapter, and because you've already got this adapter connected, it's easier to use serial.print statements to debug your code. It's ultimately up to you if you want to keep the bootloader or not, but I'm going to opt to keep it in for this project. Since I erased it by uploading this Blink program last time, I need to re-upload the bootloader. If you have an UNO with a DIP microcontroller, you can actually remove the microcontroller and use the rest of the Arduino board as a USB to serial converter to upload new programs to your 328P, assuming you've kept the bootloader. You will want to disconnect the spy lines and connect the UNO's pin 0 to the 328P's RX and pin 1 to TX as shown. You'll also want to run a wire from the UNO's reset pin to the 328P's reset pin. That's a little messy for me, so I'm going to use a 5 volt FTDI breakout board that I have lying around. I'll connect power and ground from the FTDI breakout to the breadboard. I'll also wire TX on the FTDI to pin 2 on the 328P and another from RX to pin 3. These pins are connected to the serial hardware inside the 328P. The same pins are connected to Arduino pins 0 and 1 on the UNO. The last thing we need to do is control the reset of the 328P so that it will run the bootloader right before we send it a new program. We can hack the DTR line to do that for us. We place a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in series between the reset pin and DTR, and we keep the 10K pull-up resistor connected to reset. Some serial communication implementations require handshaking in the form of lines going high or low. The FTDI chip has a data terminal ready, or DTR line, that will go low just before sending data and stay low until after it's done. By putting a capacitor in series with this line, we can pulse the reset pin low for just a brief moment which will reset the 328P but not hold it in reset. This forces it to run the bootloader right as we're about to send over our new program across the serial lines. I'm going to upload the blinky sketch again. The bootloader and fuse settings make the 328P act like an Arduino Uno, so make sure you have the Uno selected as your board. If you're using a USB to serial adapter like I am, you'll need to switch the serial port to whatever's associated with that adapter. This time, just click the upload button to send your program to the 328P. You should see the USB to serial board do its thing, and then you should be greeted by a glorious blinking LED. Now that we have a bare bones microcontroller working like an Arduino Uno, let's connect our sensor and LoRa radio. Here, I've removed the LED, as we don't need it anymore. I connected the BME280 and RFM95 just like we had with the Uno in the first episode. Once again, you'll want to refer to the 328P pinout sheet to see where everything goes. The microcontroller isn't very well labeled by itself. Open the LoRa weather client sketch that we developed in the first episode, Make sure you have the right board and serial port selected, and upload it to your 328P. With any luck, your 328P will start measuring temperature, humidity, and pressure from the BME280 and sending that data out over the LoRa radio to your server. To measure current draw, I removed the FTDI breakout board, and I'm giving the project power through my benchtop power supply, which is set to 5 volts. I've also connected a 1 ohm power resistor in series with the return path and attached a scope probe to measure the voltage drop across it, just like we did in the first episode. If we measure the current draw, we see that we're pulling about 114 milliamps when we transmit and about 18.5 milliamps when we're idling. The transmit time has not changed. It still takes about 41 milliseconds to send out our data. If you remember from the first episode, we measured the current draw of the whole system, which included the entire Arduino Uno board. Compare that to our new setup, and you can see that the transmit and idle current draws are significantly lower. Knowing that we transmit for 41.1 milliseconds every 3 seconds, we find that, with the Uno, we consume 54.4 milliamps on average. 
To make the comparison easier, we'll assume that the transmit time stays at around 41.1 milliseconds without the UNO, which it should, even if our measuring was off by a fraction of a millisecond earlier. We calculate the average current draw, and we see that it's now 19.8 milliamps, which is a savings of 34.6 milliamps. All those extraneous components on the UNO were really just getting in our way. By going to a bare bones 328p on a breadboard, we managed to cut our current consumption to about a third of what it was. That's huge! In the battery episode, we calculated that we needed an average of about 100 microamps in order to get our device to run off of two AAA batteries for a year. We're still a long ways away from that, so stay tuned and please subscribe if you'd like to keep up with these engineering adventures. <laughs>